Hey everybody, welcome to the Gentleman Scholars Club. Now of all the things that I've purchased from Suit Supply over the years, I have to say that I like their footwear the most. In the summer, I have a couple of their tassel loafers and calf. I have a couple of their suede slip-on shoes that I wear as part of my regular rotation. And the reason I do that is because they're very comfortable, they fit well, they match my style, and they were affordable when I got them while also having a pretty good quality. In the winter, I do very much the same, but I do so with boots. So when I saw that Suit Supply come out with a Belgian loafer this year, I thought I would give it a try. In this video, I'll be discussing what a Belgian loafer is, what its features are, and I'll be looking at the Suit Supply version and offering some ideas on its style as well as how you might wear it. First of all, what is a Belgian loafer? It's a loafer made in Belgium. End of video. Seriously, even if it is that, there are certain features to it that we need to talk about. Probably the most characteristic aspect of the Belgian loafer is that it is very slipper-like, very moccasin-like, therefore refined and kind of close-fitting to the foot. Minimalist, you might say. It has a narrow toe box at the front, tapers down, uh, it sits low on the foot, it doesn't have a high heel at the bottom, and has a small vamp as well, a low vamp, and the vamp being the part of the shoe, um, at the top of the foot, running from the toe box at the tip to you know where the top of your foot is. Um, and that vamp is also characteristically rounded, uh, which adds to its delicacy or its refinement. Um, looks kind of like an opera pump, perhaps, the closest association I would have, but definitely very slipper-like overall. Um, it also has a, usually a contrasting trim at the top um, where you put your foot in, which is also, again, putting into the realm of slipper, in my opinion. A couple of years back, Belgian loafers trended strongly due to the work of Baudouin and Lang, the London shoemakers. Um, and I think a lot of classic menswear junkies gravitated toward them because there was something new, which they didn't have. Um, most people didn't know about Belgian loafers um, and wanted to try them out. Baudouin and Lang got a lot of good press for their excellent craftsmanship, and so people bought them. And since then, Baudouin and Lang have grown wildly. They have a large line of Belgian loafers. Uh, but I have always avoided the Belgian loafer uh, precisely because I found it to be too delicate and I usually favor more substantial shoes. Before I went into classic menswear, before I got into it, I used to wear a lot of sort of construction boots, hiking boots, high top sneakers. Even now I always wear boots in the winter time. And so I prefer more chunky, substantial shoes. And I find the Belgian loafer because of its low profile because of its conforming fit uh, tends to make anyone's foot look smaller. Also because of its minimalism and especially the low vamp, you see a lot of the top of your foot. Right? If you wear this with socks, I think it looks kind of strange and it's just my opinion and because it shows a ton of sock. And if you wear them without socks, you see a lot of the foot flesh at the top of your foot, uh, which also I think looks kind of bizarre. And so for those reasons, I have avoided the Belgian loafer until now. That's because Suit Supply has offered something a little bit different in that department. This is the Belgian loafer from Suit Supply and it has many of the features I talked about earlier. It has the rounded vamp that is fairly low. It has the tapered toe box area, so narrow and conforming around the foot. Um, it also has the contrast or slightly contrasting trim about around where you put your foot in and also uh, around the vamp itself. Those are characteristics of the Belgian loafer style. Where it differs is that it has the contrasting rubber sole. Um, this is done in like an off-white leather, or rubber rather. And um, as such, it is sportier than the traditional Belgian loafer. Uh, if you look at Baudouin and Lang's Sagan, which is their classic flagship model, that's the traditional Belgian style. Uh, they do have the stride, which is more like this, sportier with that rubber bottom. And what the rubber bottom does is that it gives it more substance, makes it a bit more chunky than the Belgian loafer, so probably more appealing to me and others who find the traditional Belgian to be delicate. And it also adds more comfort. Uh, you got this extra layer here between you and the pavement, and also gives it a longer lifespan than the Belgian loafer if you're going to wear it a lot or wear it on the streets rather than indoors in your house. Um, I sized up on this. They had whole sizes only. So I got a 44 and 11 US, 44 EU. I usually wear a 43 and a half 
in shoes, loafers included, um, but sized up on it, and it's still quite uh, conforming to the foot. I can feel where my toe touches the inside of the shoe. I haven't worn it extensively, so I don't know if that will be uncomfortable later, but I definitely know this is more fitted than loafers and also more fitted than my slip-on shoes. Um, it occupies, speaking of slip-on shoes, an area that is slightly more refined, slightly more formal than the slip-on. And if you see them here side by side, you'll notice the differences. Uh, the slip-on shoe also has the rubber bottom, but has a larger vamp. It has a tongue area that goes back further up your foot. It has a squarish tongue as well, or squarish vamp area, rather than the rounded one of the Belgian loafers, so less refined than this. Overall, more chunky, more casual looking than the Belgian live suit supply. So where does this fit within your footwear collection, your wardrobe? If you imagine it as being from formal to least formal, you would have the calf leather loafer at the most formal end of slip-ons, and that would be either the tassel loafer or the penny loafer. And then after that, you would probably have a suede loafer, followed by a Belgian loafer, which is more like a slipper, as I've said. That'd be the third down in formality. Then you'd have this fourth down. Following that, you'd have the suede slip-on shoe, and then something like an espadrille, and then a trainer or a sneaker at the very end of the most informal footwear. So kind of in the middle of the spectrum or the continuum of formality with slip-on shoes and as such very much a niche product. Um, I find that I wear these only with things like a, a nice luxury polo shirt with dress trousers, could be Gurkha pants, uh, pleated trousers, you know, formal, formalish kind of trouser with a nice polo shirt, which I talk about in my other video. Um, and I would do the same with slip-on shoes. This kind of elevates the footwear a little bit more toward formality than the other slip-ons. But when it comes to sport coats and tailoring, I always swap this out and I swap out my slip-ons as well for traditional loafers instead. Uh, probably it's just me, I prefer not to dress things down, um, but I always gravitate toward the regular loafer rather than something like this or slip-on when I'm wearing tailoring. Now Suit Supply and their website shows you a lot of tailoring worn with the shoe. You can take a look at the images and see what you think of those but I find that it lowers the outfit too much and I would always prefer doing a um, calf loafer, like a calf tassel loafer, instead of choosing this. I would probably go sockless or with no show socks. Um, to me, the sock look with the low vamp, especially with the extra sportiness of this shoe, doesn't look exactly right. So even though it does show more foot flesh, as I called it, at the top of your foot, um, it does look better that way than it does with a sock. Let me know what you think of this particular type of Belgian loafer or the traditional models. Share in the comments. Like the video if you found it interesting or useful. And subscribe to us at the Gentleman Scholars Club for more discussion of niche topics like these niche shoes. Uh, as well as style tips, brand reviews, and overall discussion of classic menswear and tailoring. Thanks for watching.